The MC2100. They produce really clean power for a treadmill motor. But as I have long said, they are fragile like glass. So if you're going to insist on using one, especially outside of a treadmill, you're probably gonna need to know how to fix it. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. Quick overview, the MC2100 comes in a lot of varieties. The biggest difference between the boards you will see is the mounting of the transformer. On this board right here, the transformer is external. On this board, the transformer is integrated. And on this board, it's not only integrated, it's significantly smaller because it's designed to have its accessories run on a lower amperage. Fairly easy to hook up, works well with a pulse width modulator. You turn it on, nothing happens of course because of the soft start, but if we power it down, power it back on, works great. Let's take a little closer look at this board, which parts typically fail, what we're looking for when parts fail, and hopefully how to fix it. So the first tool in your arsenal for diagnosing what's going on with this board is that little LED right there. If we turn it on and it lights up, stays lit, nothing else happens. That could just be the soft start. So we'll turn this off, turn this on. And then it starts flashing. And that indicates that it is getting a pulse signal and is creating a pulse signal. So a consistent flashing means that it's working. But what else can that little light show us? Well, if it comes on and stays on but doesn't flash, that can indicate that we're not getting the correct pulse signal. So you may have your hertz set incorrectly. If it comes on for a second and then immediately goes out, and the same is true of the motor. The motor starts to spin and immediately stops. That is likely two possible components on the board, and we will circle back to that. Or, if it's complete board failure, it will actually flash four times. So what typically goes bad on these boards and how do we fix it? Well. The first possible culprit is the transformer. Like I said before, integrated on some boards, external on others, and plugs into these ports. If you are getting power to your signal generator, so when you plug the part in here, the little control that I had, if it's lighting up, that means the transformer's working. If it's not lighting up, then the transformer is either not working or maybe you've blown that fuse. The purpose of that transformer is to cut down 120 volts down to around 16 volts, and then it goes through several components here to eventually become DC, and then you've got a capacitor here to help clean it up, and that's what provides the DC output that originally controlled the treadmill console, or in this case is now going to control the pulse width signal generator. So if you're getting power to your signal generator, you know that component is working. The second component that tends to fail on these boards is the capacitor. Now, spotting a bad capacitor is usually pretty easy. You will see one of three things or a combination of all three. You will see this swollen. It will be significantly deformed. Sometimes it'll be domed on top and swollen on the sides. You will see a split in the case. You will see goo leaking out of the capacitor onto the board. Any one of those three things indicates that the capacitor is bad. And more often than not, if the capacitor does go bad, you're gonna see at least two of those things. Changing it out is really pretty easy. All you have to do is pop the board out, which of course will come back to that, and desolder two connections get a replacement capacitor, put it into place, resolder it up. This is a DC capacitor, which means it is polarized. This stripe is the negative side. 
And you do have to make sure if you're replacing it that you replace it with the same polarity because we have converted to DC by the time we get to this component. Next component that typically fails on this, and interestingly enough, the rest of the components that have a tendency to fail on this board are your heat sink components. They are the components that are doing the heavy lifting, doing most of the work. This is the bridge rectifier. Now, if this was outside of the circuit board, in other words, if this was disconnected, you could easily use a multimeter with a diode function to determine if it's working. Now, because this is integrated and there are other components, it's not as simple to check this. So if you end up pulling this out completely, you can use a meter to check it. If not, the next best option is just to check for continuity. Because typically, when a diode fails, it totally shorts out, creating total continuity between terminals. Most of the time, this component is not the culprit. Typically, if it has failed, you'll know because it will have ruptured as well. Next component we need to talk about, and that's this guy right there. That is the flyback diode. That is simply a diode that helps eliminate power spikes when the system is turned off and the field collapses in the motor. More often than not, that one does not fail. So you should not need to worry about that guy. And then we get to these two right here. This is a MOSFET. And what's important about it is this does on-off switching for DC power. In other words, once the electricity is converted to DC, it is the switching on-off action of this chip that creates the pulse width modulation that controls the speed of the motor. So oftentimes when this fails, one of two things will happen. You will turn the motor on and nothing at all will happen. That means that it failed open or you will turn the system on and the motor will immediately ramp up to like max speed and then shut off. That means that this failed in the closed position, allowing electricity to flow through it. And that sudden jolt of, of power or surge of power triggers other safeties on board. Now this guy, this is an SCR. And for all intents and purposes, an SCR and a MOSFET do basically the same thing with one major exception. An SCR is a type of component that switches on and off on the AC side. Now I know you've heard me talk about SCR voltage controllers and using them for powering a treadmill motor. And those controllers reduce the power on the AC side because that's what an SCR does. The advantage to an SCR is with AC, you can push a whole lot higher amperage because of the oscillating nature. Whereas on the DC side, components are working a whole lot harder with that switching. So the way this board is set up, you actually have two components that are working in tandem. This one is doing some switching on the AC side to initially reduce voltage. And then this one is doing some switching on the DC side to set up the final voltage. Now what's interesting, I've actually repaired a couple of these boards and if I diagnose that the problem is here and I don't replace this one, as soon as I fire it up, this one blows up. Now you're probably wondering, how did I diagnose that this one was bad? Well, the component itself was leaking and had, had popped open. The same is true in reverse. If I'm having a situation where I know it's this because I turn it on and the motor immediately comes on and then shuts off. If I replace this without replacing this, oftentimes this will pop immediately after replacing this. What that means is the situation that ultimately fried the board, like in one of my cases, I stuck my bandsaw blade and fried the board. Really what it did is it severely weakened one and the other one failed. And then once I replaced the one that failed, the other one being severely weakened also failed. So what I'm telling you is if that's what you diagnose as the problem, 
you need to replace both of these items. Both of those components are available. I picked these up on either eBay or Amazon, I can't remember at the moment. And when I got them, I got them in lots of five or 10. The SCR is part number S4025L, and the MOSFET is 1RF250N. If I can find good listings for those two parts, I will end up putting those down in the description. Changing out these components is really not that hard. You basically have just a couple of steps. The first thing you need to do is you need to remove this hot glue that was put to help hold the board in place. And that can be just scraped out with a screwdriver. From there, you need to go through and remove the bolts that are holding the four heat sink components to the heat sink. So one, two, three, four. And then you also need to remove the grounding strap from the body of the heatsink. Once you have those connectors removed, you can simply slide the board out. Couple things to note. The rectifier doesn't have anything behind it. The SCR doesn't have anything behind it. The flyback diode and the MOSFET do have this insulative film. That is to insulate an electrical connection between these components and the body of the heatsink, but it conducts heat extremely well. So if you damage this, you pull this sticker off and it tears, you don't want to put electrician's tape between the body of the component and the heatsink because while that will insulate against conductivity, it will not conduct heat very well, and you will be significantly shortening the life of these components. Now, when it comes time to go ahead and replace one of these, it's really pretty simple. All you have to do is get in there and clip the component out with a pair of pliers. Then you can use a soldering iron to heat each of these terminals and actually pull what's left out. From there, you need to open up these holes to be able to slide the new component in. And there are several ways to do that. You can use special copper wire for wicking solder away. You can use a little squeeze bottle. They make them for electronics where you heat the solder and you suck the little solder out. But what I found works extremely well is a stainless steel tapered pick. Because the solder will not stick to it, especially if you don't get it hot, all I do is I put the pick in where the hole should be and I begin to heat the solder. And when the solder liquefies, I push the pick through the hole and then remove the heat. And what that does is allows me to remove the pick and leave a nice empty hole so that I can replace the component. Now you may be thinking, these are all a very specific height and I need the hole in here to line up with the hole on the heatsink. Well, the nice thing is they've taken all guesswork out of it for you. If you look at this MOSFET chip, you can see that each of the terminals has a shoulder. And as long as that shoulder is all the way down on the board, you are going to fit properly when you go to bolt everything back up. As I said, I have repaired several of these. I've also had some that were failed attempts. I have replaced the SCR. I have replaced the MOSFET. I have diagnosed that the rectifier and the capacitor were good and I still could not fix them. At that point, it's more electronics knowledge than I have. But if it's just a basic component, if it's one of the four or five that I have shown today, it's super easy to replace and oftentimes will fix your problem. I gotta say, however, I'm still not a fan of the MC2100. Like I said, fragile like glass. If you're using this in a treadmill, it's just okay. I've replaced two of these boards in my wife's treadmill from just regular use. If you're using it in a shop environment where you can overload the board by sticking a blade or that kind of thing, it's gonna be on borrowed time. 
If you want a robust power supply that's going to get the job done and is affordable, my recommendation is always a quality setup with an SCR voltage controller. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments and I will try and get them answered for you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.